so myself chanti uh, i'm working as a java faculty here so this is the tallgrass institute will providing a well infrastructure and a well facilitated faculty to provide a good knowledge on the java uh, so and uh, most of the peoples are coming to the hyderabad to learn uh, this java course and uh, they are from different streams like uh, csc and non csc people also so here our institute will provide a different uh, manner of teaching way different i mean we need to compare with the uh, other institutes uh, and uh, we are starting our course from uh, the origin of the languages like uh, what are the languages what are the importance of languages why we need to learn the languages what is the purpose of the languages right we will give all the scope and we'll start the java from basics from c and cpp and see most of the people learn java without having any knowledge of c and cpp okay it's okay but we need to know the origin of the programming language also right uh, if we know the origin then we can get easily the knowledge regarding the java so that's why our institute will provide the training from c and cpp then we'll move to the java so before java we have a c and cpp in c and cpp we are using some programming uh, like structure procedural and uh, object oriented programming like structure and java is a completely inherited from the c and cpp only java is not a independent language regarding the structure i am saying and uh, completely java is taken from the structure is taken from c and cpp and we have so many advantages are there compared to and cpp the first and foremost the advantage is the platform independent platform independent let me discuss a small thing regarding what mean by platform independent and dependent so just we'll talk about the platform so we'll see what exactly the platform is it so the platform is a environment platform is a environment where the exactly the program is going to be executed so to execute every program the two things are mandatory one is operating system and the second one is processor these are terminology will treated as an a platform so take a c and a cpp programming language so most of the people know the c language because they may be a non csc or csc they have a pre knowledge or regarding the c if the program is c then we should say with dot c extension if the program is cpp the extension should be the dot cpp assume that we'll take a one operating system that is windows xp and the processor will be will take as a p4 as a processor so in this platform in this platform i am trying to running c and cpp programs c and cpp programs after compiling after compiling directly we will get dot exe file directly we will get dot exe and to get dot exe here we are using a internal component called as compiler called as compiler so to run c and cpp just we are using compilers so after compiling the program directly we are getting a dot exe code and dot c consists a source code source code and the dot exe files are consist directly the machine code directly the machine code so machine code having observe one point machine code having operating system instructions operating system instruction that is when which operating system we are writing the code windows xp that is so this machine code is executed on only windows xp if we cannot run this dot exe file other than windows xp suppose you want to run this file in linux linux it won't be run if you want to run this dot exe file in mac again it won't be run take any other operating system like bsd or solaris it cannot be work so that is all platform dependent nature of c and cpp so coming to our java coming to our java so the java will is a completely differ from your c and cpp and to run a java program the compilers are used and as well as another important nature of the java is we are using jvm as a interpreter so take the same scenario that is we will consider the windows xp as a operating system and the p4 as the processor so this is my platform and uh, so i am using a java program so that's why you should save with dot java file you should save with dot java file after compilation of dot java here after compilation this is the compilation phase here we are using compilers here we are using a compiler after compilation we are getting dot class file dot class file see here after compilation of c and cpp we are getting a dot exe that is having a machine code directly and after compilation of a java code we are not getting directly as a 
machine code we are getting an a byte code so this will be called as byte code and one is the best advantage of this byte code is in machine code in c language we have a operating system instruction but in dot class all we have a byte code this byte code don't have any operating system instruction so no operating specification will be there in byte code so to run this dart plus file in a linux operating system just we need a jvm supported for linux then easily your application is going to be executed on the linux suppose you want to execute this dart plus file in mac operating system just you need a jvm is supported for mac then directly your jvm your java program is going to be executed so it means java is the first nature of the java it, it is a platform independent so this is the first reason why we need to go to the java and uh, we have so many advantages like using java we can develop console windows web based and uh, mobile application also and uh, most of the people are fear with what uh, to learn a java first they need to know the programming structure to know the programming structure first they should know the object oriented programming structure without the object oriented programming structure concept you cannot write a, a single line of code in java let me explain you a piece of code how to write this object oriented programming structure right see before understanding object oriented programming let me explain you what exactly the basic of the object oriented programming so the basic concept of the object oriented programming is class and objects so see here myself i am the faculty in front of you so i am visible to you i am your object i have a marker so the marker is an object and i have a board here the board is also an object and this screen is recording using camera that is also an object so these are objects so our real world entity all our real world entity are evolving with the objects only real world objects now these are the objects so object is a physical thing we can touch and we can feel it simply we'll say and regarding class class is a blueprint simply the class is a blueprint so i am here the faculty i am here the faculty with the name like chanti and here chanti is an object because it is existing i am existing one and the faculty is not visible it is a imaginary thing it's my profession so it will be called as a class and now let me give an a small example regarding to understand class and object so see uh, can you see a flower i mean cat or else can you draw a flower is it possible to draw a flower no it is not possible because there is no uh, specification is there but we can draw a rose flower because we have a specification so here again the flower is an a class and the, the rose is an a object simply we will say that and another best example to understand the thing atm most of the people are using atm i will tell you some atm code how the object oriented program is written atm is visible or not no it's not visible sbh atm is visible sbi atm is visible and icic atm is visible whereas atm is not visible it is an imaginary thing so the atm is an a class and a sbh sbi all are all are treated as an a objects so coming to what the programming structure of a java is class and then object and the class consists attributes and a, attributes and a behavior of a real world entity behavior of a real world entity let's see faculty is my class now my attributes are faculty id faculty name faculty salary faculty address all are treated as attributes and uh, behavior is nothing but what i am doing i am teaching now right so this is what my behavior i can speak that is my behavior i can eat i can run i can sleep these are my actions so whatever the actions are involved the actions are called as an a behavior so let me write a simple example for atm code how the atm code is written see uh, i am taking a class as atm that is class as atm and see first we need to discuss on the attributes so the we know the atm attributes like uh, username pin amount these are called as attributes so just take at a pin so always we are giving a pin as a integer pin as a integer and then we'll take the name that is username we'll take in as a string data type and we have a a 
account balance also so the take the balance as double so in this way you need to declare all the data first you need to declare all the data and data is also called as attributes now behavior behavior includes what working phenomena of a real physical thing of the object so using atm you can perform withdraw deposit transfer all the things you can perform it so let me write some a piece of code that is void withdraw of this is the code and a void deposit this is the code and a void balance inquiry so these are the common terminology we are going to deal with the this atm real time see observe these are called as behaviors or in real world terminology for programming terminology we'll say that methods so the complete your object oriented programming language complete your object oriented programming language gives a real world entities also so always we need to think a real world entity and then we'll start to writing the program if you think a real world entity as a program then you can easily write a java program nothing is there here so this is what object oriented programming structure and this is a very basic thing to learn the core java and coming to the advanced java we have a practical knowledge that is practical application approach we need in jd in, in advanced java so in advanced java we have a concept like uh, the first one is as jdbc jdbc and the second one is we have a servlets and a jsp so the jdbc is a is a technology used to to connect with the front end and a back end application uh, in nowadays we are doing so many operations with the web technology means like a registration form and login form so when you entered your credential on the login form when you click on submit some validations on checking your database set so to connect the jdbc I mean to to connect with that back end we are using the jdbc technology and see using servlets and jsp we can perform some validation on the server side so the server side validations are like checking whether the user id and password are available or at server side so so many actions we are performing using servlets and jsp and after completion of this servlets and jsp we are going to a concept called frameworks frameworks and a frameworks includes like a struts and a hibernet and uh, springs and uh, nowadays no one industry are using this jdbc and uh, servlets and jsp and uh, instead of jdbc the sun microsystem the sun microsystem using ejb entity beans ejb entity beans and instead of servlet jsp the sun microsystem introducing ejb session beans session beans again they are not fulfill with the user requirements immediately this ejb team developers are trying to uh, get all the disadvantage of these two things and trying to develop a new frameworks called hibernate and uh, springs so now the most of the companies are using this hibernate and springs they are not using this older approach but to get the knowledge of springs and hibernate we should learn this jdbc servlets and jsp so other than this content our talras will finish to will provide a basic knowledge of c and a c++ after completion of core java we will train you in html css javascript sql and a pl sql also because most of the peoples are from non css they don't know the knowledge regarding this html css and javascript if you know the this html css and javascript only we can develop a web based application without having the knowledge we cannot develop it so our institute will provide all the things and after completion of all these modules all these modules and we will give a real time project that is live project we will give so live project means in academics uh, i think you have done your live projects in your curriculum like uh, just they are telling the oops concepts after that they will give some basics of servlets and jsp and they will give to knowledge of some login and registration page they will give they, they will not give any complete idea about the projects but our institute will give a definitely from first page to the last page will try to help you develop in each and every page so this is what the importance of this my institutes right thank you